Today, we're going to show you how to make a twisted cotton rope pet leash using Ravenox twisted cotton rope. Before we begin, here are a few of the items you'll need to make your pet leash. Half Ravenox twisted cotton rope. You can use a smaller or larger diameter as well, but today we'll be demonstrating with our half inch twisted cotton rope. One metal bolt snap or a snap of your choosing. Small scissors. A needle. Large scissors. Pliers. Half transparent tape. Three quarters transparent tape. Double sided tape. Twine. To start, we'll be forming the handle, which is also known as an eye splice. This eye splice forms a permanent loop at the end of the three strand rope. Three cycles of splicing tucks are sufficient for our natural cotton rope. Five cycles are needed for synthetic rope, since it is more slippery. All Ravenox leashes use six splicing tucks for added strength and a more elegant visual appearance. To begin making your leash, it is best to create a small measurement table like I've done here. Measure about 14 inches for the grip or handle you'll make. You can test this by sliding your hand through and seeing if it feels comfortable for you. Next, place your needle at the place you want to start the splice and at the end of your handle. This will help hold your place as you start your splice. Cut the tape at the end of the twisted rope to have each single strand ready to start the braid. Then cut three pieces of transparent tape to hold each single strand individually. Apply the transparent tape to each end of the single strands of rope. Once they are taped, separate the individual strands of the twisted cotton rope back to where the needle was placed. Take the needle out and select the uppermost strand end and tuck it under the nearest strand on the standing part, tucking against the lay of the rope. Turning the standing part and, still working against the lay of the rope, tuck the second strand end under the next strand. Turn the standing part and tuck the third strand end under the strand on the standing part lying between the first two strands. This completes the first cycle of tucks. Follow the tuck and turn back splice pattern, continuing with the strand that is in the middle for a total of six cycles. Notice that we insert the standing part to every other twist of the rope and flip the leash again to continue and insert the second strand to create the braid. Don't forget that you will also insert the strands to every other twist of the rope. Also, remember to flip the rope as you continue to weave each strand.
Once you're done with the six cycles, use your measuring table and make sure it measures six inches. Now you'll want to cut three pieces of your three quarter inch transparent tape to hold the braid. Take the first piece of tape and apply it to the location where you completed the sixth cycle of the splice. Then, use your scissors to cut the ends of the single strands that are protruding. Once all three ends have been cut, add the second and third pieces of tape to the end of the splice to secure the ends and ensure they do not unravel. Next, you'll use a section of double-sided tape to cover the end of the splice and assist with securing the twine that will be used as a decorative whipping over the end of the splice. Now you're ready to add the finishing wrap over the end of the splice. To start, lay the twine over the length of the splice and make sure it completely covers the tape. Then fold the twine in half and leave about three to four inches as an end loop to help secure the whipping as a finishing touch. Then take the long end of the twine and begin wrapping it around the splice over the tape. Make sure you wrap tightly and keep the strands close together. Once you've completely covered the end of the splice and all of the tape, measure about 15 more inches of twine and cut that section. It's best to have sharp scissors. Now take the long end of the twine and put the end through the loop that was initially created. Then pull on the strand from the bottom edge to close the loop and secure the end of the whipping upon itself. Grab your needle and put the long end of the twine through the eye. Fold the long end of the twine down the length of the whipping at a slight angle. You can go straight down, but it is much more aesthetically appealing to go at a slight angle. Use your needle to weave the twine through the rope just underneath the bottom edge of the whipping. Take the same end of the twine and fold it back over the other side of the whipping at a slight angle and push the twine through the top edge with your needle. Repeat the process one more time on both sides, ensuring you keep your whipping close to the original strand. Next, use your needle to push the twine under the length of the whipping from top to bottom. 
If your whipping is tight as it should be, you'll need to use a pair of pliers to help you push the needle through to the bottom. To finish the whipping, take the two ends and tie a double overhand knot to secure the ends. Use some sharp scissors to cut the ends as close to the knot as possible. Then tuck the end underneath the whipping to hide the knot. This completes the eye splice handle end of your twisted cotton rope leash. Now you're ready to move on to the other end of your leash, where you'll secure the metal hardware of your choosing to complete your leash. Going back to your measuring board, measure out six inches from the end, just like you did for the eye splice handle. It's always best to add in an additional inch for wiggle room. Fold the rope in half at the six inch mark and slip your bolt snap or other metal hardware over the rope into the fold. Again, use your needle to mark the spot you'll be splicing to. Cut three more pieces of transparent tape to hold each single strand individually. Once they are taped, separate the individual strands of the twisted cotton rope back to where the needle was placed. Take the needle out and select the uppermost strand and tuck it under the nearest strand on the standing part. Tucking against the lay of the rope, turn the standing part and, still working against the lay of the rope, tuck the second strand end under the next strand. Turn the standing part and tuck the third strand end under the strand on the standing part lying between the first two strands. This completes the first cycle of tucks. Follow the tuck and turn back splice pattern continuing with the strand that is in the middle for a total of five cycles. Notice that we insert the standing part to every other twist of the rope and flip the leash again to continue and insert the second strand to create the braid. Don't forget that you will also insert the strands to every other twist of the rope. Also remember to flip the rope as you continue to weave each strand.
Once you're done with the five cycles, use your measuring table and make sure it measures six inches. Now you'll want to cut three pieces of your three quarter inch transparent tape to hold the braid. Take the first piece of tape and apply it to the location where you completed the sixth cycle of the splice. Grab your scissors and cut the ends of the single strands that are protruding. Once all three ends have been cut, add the second and third pieces of tape to the end of the splice to secure the ends and ensure they do not unravel. The last step is to wrap your twine over the splice and the tape just as you did for the eye splice handle. Simply follow the steps before and both ends can come out looking just as beautiful. It's very fun and easy to make any kind of customized rope leash with Ravenox Twisted Cotton Rope. Choose from a wide variety of colors and diameters to make a custom leash that's perfect for your needs. Perfect for small dogs, horses, and everything in between.